podcast starts now. Our guest is furious at us. Oh, um, I actually didn't even realize. Yeah, I thought we were just sort of doing a bit and playing around, but no, I guess no, no. he's mad. You know, a lot of people would say that comedy is based in truth, and yeah. um, you know, in pretending to sort of be upset with us, I think he's actually mad at us. Okay, but here's my thing. Okay. Are you mad at me because <laughs> I because I think that is what you are trying to make the narrative that our guest is mad at us, but in fact I sort of think you're mad at me because I have a Santa hat and you don't. Are you accusing me of projection, George? I, well, I don't know if it's projection per se. I think it is more being dishonest and lying <laughs> intentionally. Huh. Okay. Um you know what? Yeah. You are mad at me. Yeah, I'm upset with I you. I cannot believe this. You know what, George, you came in with, you said holiday-themed straight shooters. You are wearing a Santa hat. Yeah. And, you know, where we was sort of the, hey, heads up. Right, right, right. No. So now guess who looks stupid? Well, but and this is the thing with, like, I woke up, and I truly had a vision in my head. I was like, oh, my God, I have a Santa hat in my closet. How funny would it be to be wearing a Santa hat while <laughs> our guest is promoting his... Yeah, classic comedic and, bit. Right. So... I do think I was sort of temporarily blinded by my incredible ideation and mm -hmm. by my amazing sort of um, improv skills <laughs> and actually costume design skills. Yeah. So much so that I forgot that I'm part of a duo and a partnership and I of actually course. put myself first. Oh yeah. Before the group. Yeah, I think uh, I think you know when you're sort of blinded, and when you're in that creative space where you're, um, you know, writing and ideating and, and thinking Santa hat. You know, I just want you to think of me as well, and maybe shoot a text over. And of course, to jump off of that, I do know that you are very triggered by two people matching, <laughs> and this is something that we have talked about a lot in our live shows, where we uh, sometimes we'll both come in wearing the same color or wearing the same silhouette, of course. and you will not like that. So I do think subconsciously actually we are so connected that I thought to myself, thank God I'm wearing a Santa hat and Sam is not because he will feel so comfortable that we're not matching. You know, now I think it is you who is being dishonest. Oh, I'm that's trying. interesting. In what sense? <laughs> I think you're trying to take, um, you know, your selfish moment and turn it into a selfless moment. Well, that's sort of what the entertainment industry is all about. Period. <laughs> Um, I don't know if you've ever heard anyone talking about highlighting marginalized voices, and yet somehow they're coming out on top. <laughs> okay, you're. I don't even know how to respond to that. Mm, well, you're scared. <laughs> um, well, I guess I want to change the subject and say, are you in the holiday spirit? Well, I will say you are wearing a sort of a holiday sweater. <laughs> That's true. So it, 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 if I hadn't actually brought the hat, you would be more on holiday theme than me. <laughs> but my holiday sweater is subtle enough that right. people would almost forget. No, I'm holiday. wearing a costume. You're, yeah. Yeah, I'm actually ready for a, a, a line of children to sit on my lap and, uh, and tell me that they want a fixed gear bike. And also the Santa hat, just the Santa hat, mm -hmm. is it's sexy. Is, it's your <laughs> 90s dad in holiday movie. Oh, who's I like see. A little bit silly, a little bit fun. That's interesting. That's where your mind went. My mind went to like beginning of porn. We're watching different things. <laughs> you know, this is why it's so important to talk about media diets with your friends because everyone's consuming different stuff. But, <laughs> and you think there's a monoculture, but there's really, really not. Absolutely. <laughs> and speaking of monoculture, our... <laughs> I would say monoculture is actually back because of our today's guest's oeuvre. I think because so I would too. say this is someone who has united the left and the right, the mm -hmm. young and the old, mm -hmm. the LGBTQ plus, and the proudly straight. <laughs> yeah, um, he's been on the Billboard Hot 100. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> he's actually performing at uh, the Grammys. This Multiple year. Grammy nominee. Yeah. He is. They are predicting he's going to lose to her. H E R. H E R. But you know what? It's just she deserves it. She deserves it, and <laughs> women's stories it matter. She's working so hard, and her really comedic does. Christmas album is actually pretty good. It's not bad. People have said that's not what we expect from her. It's called "I Have Heard of Christmas." Period. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's called "I Have Heard of Christmas." Yeah. <laughs> Um, without further ado, please welcome to the podcast Matt Rogers. Yes, I have a few things to say. Please. please. One, I think Christmas is my culture, and my culture is not your costume. Uh, Can tea I say that? Spilled. Two. Oh. I have to say, one of the things about Santa hats is that everyone always thinks, oh my God, let me go to my collection of Santa hats. You only ever have one. 
<laughs> if you even like, let me stop you right there. <laughs> Who thinks let me go to my collection of Santa hats? I just hats? feel like Santa hats are like sort of like a white tank, or of like or, or like a turtleneck. Mm-hmm. A cl- they're you, a basic. <laughs> you think that they're just like in your yes mm-hmm. to use a word oeuvre of mm. clothes, aka a closet. Yes, yes an oeuvre yes. of a closet is an oeuvre of, of clothes. clothes. Yes, that's yes. rule of culture not number twenty three. <laughs> I, I get in this room and I sort of yeah, he can't not. <laughs> a closet is an oeuvre of clothes. Go on. The third thing I want to say is that Bowen and I love to match and we often do match and we often don't just match but like correspond mm. in a, mm. we often have like a like a sartorial story that only we know yes sure and if people don't ask we go home very disappointed I actually think Sam you have gotten more accepting Into of it. I'm learning to love matching. Yeah. Well, you did it today without even knowing. And can I ask, did you show up today in this because you thought this is a slight nod to the holiday and this is sort of the holiday episode of Stradio Lab? <laughs> okay. Yeah, actually. Yeah. So it was like one I've been wanting to wear, I want I've been wanting to jump into the holiday spirit yeah. sartorially, uh-huh. generally. <laughs> and then <laughs> And then today well, I was here. like, well, I was like, but it's so early. And then I was like, no, 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 because no. this is going to come out in a month. It's essentially yeah. Christmas Day. Yeah. Wait, when will this come out? I have no idea. Neither it, do I. To know it, that is so messed up. I it's know. coming out at, it will, will come out at a time that is appropriate for promoting a Christmas themed product. <laughs> and I thank you. <laughs> and can we say we're all sort of, I know podcasts are now a visual medium sort of cross yes. big money players. Uh, yeah. yeah. So we're all wearing this sort of neck. So well, how would you describe this? And, and again, it's neck. sweater. <laughs> <laughs> it's it it is for sure yeah. crew neck, but it's also thick collar. Crew yeah, neck. a little collar, bit up, crew neck. A, like almost a mock, almost a mock. Yeah, almost nearly very hinting, much hinting nearly at a mock. mock. And we are also each mock. of us is a different baby mock, yes, baby mock. Baby mock. And each of us is a different neutral tone. Because yeah. it's beige, brown, gray. Wow. Okay, thank you for confirming what this was, because you know- Well, I know your color, color yeah. I thought this was green. Really? Mm. Gray and green are like sisters to me, like twin sisters. Wow. wow. Fraternal. Yeah, Mary-Kate and Ashley. Very much. Are they fraternal? Isn't that insane? I actually no. still, they literally are, look it up, and I still think people are lying to me when they tell me that. Because I'm like, they're identical. We find out that Ashley's like a foot taller this whole time <laughs> and always has been. Like, she's the, like Mary Kate's been on a box. She's wearing inserts. Yeah. They get like a ton of surgery every year. No, it actually makes me so upset when people tell. But it is, it, unfortunately, no, it is biologically upset. true. Yeah. This is so unfortunate. I yeah. mean, listen, here's the thing. They might be fraternal, yeah. but they are identical. And, and, and they, descriptively, literally. they are identical. And this also, is, yeah, what is fraternal if not, like, if they look alike, and this is then from you're not division, fraternal. They're sister's show. What is fraternal if not identical, but a little fucked? up and that was the bottle episode with Mary Kate and Ashley yes Uh, so I think it's sort of a very nature versus nurture where maybe nature wise they are fraternal but because they've always done the same exact thing they became identical yeah they talk at the same time yes you're invited you're invited who's saying what (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Who is the Mary Kate and Ashley of your friend group? I point to the two of you. Okay, so one of them is more troubled and one of them is more chic. To be honest, I don't know. I but don't who's, consider isn't them. Isn't Ashley more troubled? No, no, no. Mary Kate is more troubled. Oh. See, this is what I mean. They're, they have become one. Yeah, totally. It's but I also to, think. Just like you guys and maybe this is same. Maybe this Shut is up. wrong. <laughs> maybe this is wrong, but I almost feel like Mary Kate is both most. Both most troubled. She's both most troubled. <laughs> You're like Julianne Moore in May I'm December. Julianne, I'm, I'm Megan Mullally in Dicks. Need, by the way, you need to see that. I, I haven't seen it yet. You I want have to. to see May December. It is, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, one of the most important films of all I was time. supposed to see it yesterday, and then the oh. timing didn't work out, and I saw Dream Scenario. Are you aware of this? I'm aware no, of this. No, but someone texted about that yesterday. So, it first of all, Kate Berlant is in it, so shout out to the New York comedy community for that. Yeah, she's... <laughs> Congratulations to Kate Congratulations to Kate Berlant. She's and out also, here booking. She's out here booking. Representing big money players. That's right. Everywhere but this podcast. So <laughs> it is with Nicolas Cage. She's and, scared of how good she'd be on. Well, please. <laughs> yeah, I don't no, know. I, by it, the way, I, I would die for her. Of course. And I'm being oh, yeah. and I'm being silly in a sort of Mary Kate and Ashley no, way. No, you're being yet genius. sincere, and that it really goes with your hat. Because exactly. it's silly yet sincere, just like Christmas. You would love Kate Berlant on this podcast. She would be great on Period. it. And she hasn't She has said it. no. No. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, she has actually not said no. 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 Um, Even worse. (laughs) (laughs) She said fuck no. Okay, I have a question. The idea of a visual podcast was brought up, and the, you know, podcasts are getting increasingly more visual. As someone in the industry, I have a podcasting question. Okay. How visual does a podcast get before it becomes a talk show? Ooh. Oh, 
I actually think it immediately becomes a talk show. Really? Because yeah. really that's what it is. Once you are watching something and people are talking, that's a talk show. I'm sorry, point blank. That scares me because that makes me feel like the podcast industry is actually crumbling without us talking about it. Well, you it. know what you actually are? And I'm looking at you guys in the eyes as I say this. And no, Hoda if, and I were, if I were sitting over there, I'd be looking at myself saying it. YouTubers. No. Sorry. You? I don't make the rules. I just report the news. That is the most fucked up thing you've ever said to us. Well, then stop the cameras. Cut the cameras dead <laughs> ass. Stop the cameras. If you don't want to be YouTubers, you need to turn these off right now. I'm you know, at everyone here. Just because I am an LGBTQ plus creator with an interest in makeup and beauty does not make me a YouTuber. <laughs> it's very Mary Kate Just because we're constantly collabing with other creators in our industry does not make us a YouTuber. It literally does. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god see and if because you're a YouTuber mm -hmm. people that are watching that YouTube video can see what the podcast listeners cannot which is that George just flipped his head hat like it was a fucking a Ariana Grande ponytail yeah with attitude during the Sweetener World Tour <laughs> You know, it's interesting. When you have sort of either an accessory or a wig or something you can play with, you realize how much other people lean on that. And I, as someone yeah. with buzzed hair and sort of a neutral colored sweater, don't have tricks like that. Well, that's why you're so smart, because you have nothing to lean on. Well, that is quite literally <laughs> yeah. true. I have no talent or point of view. But I do have a master's degree from a program that is no longer accredited. Yes, of course. Well, can I actually just say, um, one of the things that we share, which is why it's okay that we sort of don't have a hat, is yeah. we have a signature <laughs> hair aesthetic. Yeah. We do. We do. And, and a you, mustache currently, and, actually. Oh, That's wow. True. I forgot I had it. Yeah, well. Yeah. Is it working? Absolutely. Yeah, it's working really? really well, yeah. Bowen said to me the other day that he feels I should commit to the mustache and just do the mustache. I feel like you have committed to I the mustache. I don't think you should commit. I, oh. think, I think it's fun that you go back and forth. You know what they used I to think... say to me in restaurants when I worked in? That I look different every day. Because I would come in with facial hair, then I'd shave, then I'd wear a hat, then I and I was sort of that's when I knew I was an actor. Yeah, chameleon. Mm. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. <laughs> oh my god, he found the camera. The camera guy just laughed at me. Like I was making <laughs> some kind of joke. Like this is supposed to be funny, this podcast. No, that was heartfelt. I think people are crying at home. I know I am. Yeah, you know how I know you're an actor? Because you're mocking the behind the scenes crew. <laughs> First thing I do when I get on set. Yeah. What's your name? Psych. I don't <laughs> care, bitch. Get me a water All right. now. Okay, Dakota Johnson's in the house. <laughs> Wait, did you see the trailer for Madam Web? Yeah. She has a line in it that's going viral on Twitter. <laughs> yeah. He was in the Amazon with my mother while she was researching spiders right before. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Okay. You, should, you should watch more. Can I actually say something things. provocative and controversial? Oh, no. Almost. I would expect nothing less from you, George Severus. I actually am in a place where I do not click play on trailers because I have been burned too many times where they give too much away. Yeah. Like, in fact, talk about May, December. Recently, someone told me Julianne Moore has a lisp in it. Yes, she does. I should not know that going in. And that, what say, a fun surprise. I didn't see that coming, and it took me. I watched it with Greta at her house. And it took me approximately 15 minutes to adjust. Yeah. And I think that that was on purpose. Yeah. Because she is supposed to disorient you. Of course. Yes. Well, like she disorients the child she fucks and then marries. Okay, judgmental. Okay, stop. You're spoiling it. <laughs> That's one of the top things to know about the film. Well, yes, that I, I yeah, do know that. Yeah. And um, and I know I did forget though. And I know they're <laughs> Charles Melton. That's the they're yes. saying that's the new guy. Charles Melton, they're saying that's the new guy. I can confirm his performance in the movie is stunning. They're saying Charles Melton is the new guy, and they're saying Jacob Bellordi is the new guy. Oh. And if you don't agree, you actually are being arrested. They're taking you away. They're in taking handcuffs. you away. Are we allowed to have two new guys, or are they going to have to? Well, I think that's the, the issue. Crown. They might have to duke it out. Yeah, they have to duke it out. Yeah. And of course, where does Barry Keoghan fit into all of this? I think he's, he's already sort of fit in. Yeah, he's got his place. He's not yeah. the new guy, but he is a new guy. He's a new guy. Have you guys seen Saltburn? Yes. No. And I will not be commenting on it. On I can, and you want to know why? That's because success is a prison. I because actually, now that this podcast is successful, and I and let me tell you something, it is. And I've been where you've been. I've been I've been a newly successful podcast, mm -hmm, and now mm -hmm. you're at that place where you can't say you didn't like Emerald Fennell's new movie. I never said that, and never because would. you can't. I think Emerald Fennell is a filmmaker. One hundred. I think she is a woman. I think she's Amazing. British, and therefore, if and you I say think, something negative, and I think she is also a writer, yeah. and oh. I think she has a background in acting, and I think you're saying facts about her. You read and, the Wikipedia, and I think she even has made multiple films. She's Amazing. Has. I think her first name is Emerald, and her last name is Fennell. 
his review of Saltburn. Okay, Matt, was there a moment when you said, "Uh oh, I'm a newly successful podcast," and I said something, and I'm not now, now I'm not allowed to say that anymore? Actually, yeah. What was it? I remember there was a time where Queer Eye had just become really successful, and Bowen sort of popped off on. I can say this because I think he stands by it, mm -hmm. and he has. <laughs> well, also Queer Eye is now falling apart, so yeah, right, because Bobby has said yes. Well, it's I'm the out. last season. Yeah. Oh, is or it's, it? it's at least Bobby's last season. One which of them was means not. It's the last. Which means the last season. One of them was not invited to one of the other's weddings. Oh shit! Ooh. I think what's the two? I I can't remember what yeah, wedding like it is. Yeah, there's some drama, where but like there is drama. The other ones or something. Well, that's been since the beginning. Of okay. course, that's well, like a peek behind the curtain. I, I don't know. Yeah, right? like I, don't I feel know. like I, I didn't know. Like, that. Again, a successful podcast scary to say things you think, but I I feel like they that it's not all paradise. Sure. Well, I do think not only is it all not all paradise, but there are alliances. Yeah, that's clear. But what I will say is, from the beginning, and I'm sorry to cut you off. No. From the beginning, <laughs> I felt because my and by no I mean that means you have to stop. <laughs> yeah. yeah, don't continue. <laughs> and by yeah. no I mean and I please refuse. welcome Emerald Fennell. <laughs> From the beginning, I thought, because I have a background as a viewer of MTV's The Challenge, where Karamo was, in fact, in the villains versus heroes oh season. Oh, my God. Of, like, I had the, no the idea gauntlet, of the challenge, as a hero, As a imagine. villain. Well, well, that makes sense. Right. So Karamo, before he... Beca I, like, my big thing when Queer came out is I was like, don't people know Karamo, who's now literally the psychiatry expert, used to actually be, like, a villain. Like, he was a reality television villain, and now he is taking people on walks around the block and talking to them about their marriage. <laughs> that doesn't track for me. So I thought if anyone would be the one to sort of, like, break off, it would be him. But... Lo and behold, it's Bobby, the nice one who actually loves beige. Yeah. I think that Bobby is in a glow up period. Yeah. And yeah, I, agree. I think that Bobby is going to stand the test of time. And yeah, I yeah. think that Bobby, I support Bobby. And I can I say, I mm. support them all. I agree, oh, actually. Beautiful. I support them all. You know, who didn't support them all at one time was Bowen Bo Yang. Bowen Yang. <laughs> who sort of mm, had a reaction to Anthony I can only describe as negative. Oh, sure. sure. Well, we all, I mean, everyone fact, did. We just didn't have successful podcasts at the time. Right. So you were on an episode of Lost Coach one time when I came in, I came into the podcast hot from watching Queer Eye in my quote unquote Anthony drag. Oh. And I believe it was like a white t-shirt and like a cool bandana. Yeah. And it was shortly after that, that like that t Bowen tweeted about Anthony something <laughs> negative and it went sort of crazy. And like, there was like an article written like about Anthony being polarizing, like the pros and cons oh of God. Anthony or something. Which maybe we even wrote for Vulture. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> so you are so you wanna you sort of wanna be the victim of the media narrative while also well, creating literally it. Literally writing the article. <laughs> Yeah, there was an article that came out that we also wrote. <laughs> well, we were featured in an article that, oh, right, we also authored. And yeah. can I say, I was pro-Anthony. I was arguing for Anthony. I mean, and this I is, still do This is this such day. a classic Matt and Bowen argument of, like, <laughs> like, if you were to be like, what did Matt and Bowen last argue about? I'd be like, was it Anthony? And Matt was pro <laughs> and Bowen was Anthony? Well, the answer is, it was, does a Big Mac have tomato? And the answer is... No, it does not. And oh. I was wrong and huh. Bowen was right. But to return to the story, <laughs> Bowen had said something negative about Anthony on Twitter, now X, now useless. Um, yeah, whereas back then it was really so fun. It, was a <laughs> it did mean yeah. something. It, it was a community. Um, but then like it like got back to him, I think. And, well, like, yeah. And I, I think that's when I realized like, oh shit, like we can't really be doing this anymore. Yes. And then there was another time where I had to take an I don't think so honey out of an episode because I had a screen test for, to be in a movie with someone I had done and I don't think so. Oh, yes, and out. that is Did so I, I actually juicy. have a guess for who it might be. If you guess correctly, we can leave it in. Tina Fey. No. Fuck. Damn. And now, and now I yeah. would never I don't think so any Tina Fey. Someone did I don't think so any someone Tina has, Fey yeah. at a Las Culturistas live show and oh. it does haunt me to think the the live show I don't think so honey's that exist yeah. out there where it truly gets like really tough. Um, I mean, there are, yeah. When you're in front of 300 people at the Bell House, you say some kookaloo. You know, I would say at your most, at your peak of I Don't Think So Honey Lives, you were a free speech podcast. Oh, 100%. Oh, 100%. And now we're sort of, you know, Well, not. yeah. We're sort of... Well, now you're the... part of, you're officially part of the DNC, actually. <laughs> Bowen always has been part of the DNC, and yes. I'm on record, he's a centrist. Of course. Yeah. Yes, whereas you're, of course, a radical leftist. <laughs> Yeah, and everyone knows that about me. Everyone yeah, knows always that. have been. Well, that little leftist was me. <laughs> that little leftist was me. Do you remember when I? Do you guys remember when I had a Kamala Harris T-shirt? Can I tell you something? Yes. No, I don't remember that. 
I actually I know that you'll never forget it. No, but what it's not. But I, I know that this? you. I know you, and I know that you now almost feel embarrassed or think that I feel, I feel so a certain way. But to me, that is so. Like I want to go back and 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 oh, hug definitely. and kiss you wearing a Kamala T-shirt. <laughs> I know you want to go back. It's and hug so and kiss me. iconic. Horny ass. Do well, you still have it? No, it's it's gone. So basically, I got it. I wore it once, posted it on Instagram. This is so pathetic. <laughs> and I think it was because I was just like looking at the field of like co- like contenders for of the course. Democrats, and I was just like, okay, I was of the mind where we have to win, right? Mm-hmm. And so I fell victim to a v- media narrative that was she is the one that yes. that will win. And so I was like, she had had a good debate performance, and so I bought the shirt because I was, I guess affected by that little girl was me mm-hmm. and I really hated Biden. Yeah. Yeah. To this day I don't like Biden. <laughs> and um because that was the two of them head to head and she had sort of emerged victorious, I was like, I'm buying her shirt. Yeah. I did and then like sort of I felt people be like, you are and this is pre Chugi. Of course. They were saying they were saying Chugi with their eyes. And I immediately agreed and she sort of ended up being Nothing. Well, she's well, vice president. I mean, and she remains nothing to this day. And so, you know. I, Matt, I just... It we is, all live, we learn. You have such a, a power of living out loud that, you know... <laughs> that is true, actually. I really sometimes envy, you know? <laughs> and this is a drag like I've never No, heard. no, 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 no. You no, really live, you out, live loud. out loud. In a no way matter that... if it's humiliating or... No, every day I wish I could live out loud to half of what you do. Because I, you know, I'll be like, I'll watch that debate and I'll be like, okay, who, who's, you know, doing well? And it's like, I'm instantly already being like, okay, well, if I wear that shirt, that's going to look stupid in six months. If I do that, it's going to look... And I'm we like, are I'll, so... I'll just be silent and yeah. wait till, you know, things are very crystal clear. Yeah. And by that point, Biden's been president for two years. Uh, hundred percent. We are actually complete. Sam and I are both fully silence is violence. Like we have not <laughs> spoken in years. And we were just talking about this every time each of us, every time we post on Instagram, you were saying this, the vibe is like, I'm breaking my silence. Yeah. <laughs> There's never any momentum of like, well, this is sort of what I do here. Like I'm posting like yeah. Yeah, videos more, or so, you know, I'm way more like that now. Sure. Like, I don't really live out loud as much, to be honest. Wow. I live out loud. I mean, I'm releasing a album sure yeah, but sure. like um and thank you for bringing it up on this yeah, talk that show was my, that was my forced transition <laughs> um but like but no I, I i now i'm a lot more aware of the sort of things that can happen where let's just say you bought a that little girl was me little yes. girl kamala shirt and posted it on instagram you know what i mean yes. like i'm way more aware of what could happen and I just want to say, ultimately, I did vote for Bernie Sanders <laughs> in that primary, who I wanted all along. Mm-hmm. Of course. Yeah, and you're vote. writing him in in 2024. Yes, I will. But you're actually voting in a swing state as well. 100%. So that's I'm, interesting. I'm a new that's voter in, you're a new voter in Ohio. Atlanta, and you're writing Georgia. in Bernie Sanders. Mm-hmm. I actually know people that have moved to Atlanta for that reason. To vote? To vote. Not for the tax breaks? <laughs> Liars, I guess it was for the experts. <laughs> hey, you're always here to reveal the dark truth, aren't you? George? I mean, like Hollywood, isn't everything filmed in Atlanta because of the tax breaks? I mean, everything yeah. goes back to taxes. Yeah, yeah are you thinking of? Are you literally thinking of voting for Donald J. Trump? <laughs> are you thinking of the queer eye guys <laughs> who moved to Atlanta to film the latest season? Well, they didn't do that. The you're like, I know. They made them do that. Netflix made them do that. And we want to talk about a big corporation. <sighs> Let's talk about that. Netflix, May much December. like Emerald Fennell. Is a is wonderful an woman. Amazing place yes. for media. I had like a not so I appreciated Promising Young Woman for what it tried to do. Uh huh. Which had, is what? Had, Footage not found. <laughs> what, well, what it tried to do is have a great trailer. No, what it tried to do is have Emerald Fennell give an interview and be like, it's like an apple where you buy into it and it's not a candy apple. There are there are razors in it. She, yeah, she, that was yeah. An she was like she was raisins, like an apple full exactly of raisins. Exactly what promising yeah. young woman yeah. was. Yeah. Anyway, but go but on. I had I, that was one of the times when I realized the podcast like could not be a place for free speech because yes. I got on on the podcast and said my honest review of Promising Young Woman, which was that you know while I think give me a hundred movies like that before any of this yes. other bullshit. Of course. And I and but there was things about the script that just just did not work. And so then it was this thing of lots of women who had really been moved by the movie, and I I appreciate that and understand that, had a very negative reaction to me personally Mm -hmm. because of what I had thought about the movie. And I also saw this phenomenon happen with Barbie. 
And now I think I understand the value of like, look, not everything has to exist as like a fucking Oscar contender. But it's hard when it comes out and everyone's like, this is an Oscar movie. This is the screenplay of yes. the year. And you as someone who's like, okay, well, with that information, I'm now going to look at it like that. And there are things to discuss about it. Let's discuss this piece of mm -hmm, art. Mm -hmm. And yet there's people who are like, feel really spoken for by the movie. And so that's the kind of thing where it's like, when you're on a piece of media that a lot of people listen to and that a lot of people consume, you're gonna get that type of thing where it's just like, yeah, no, not everyone is listening to this in like, quote unquote, good faith yeah. or a critical lens. It's like, sometimes people just like what they like and they're gonna get on social media and be militant about it. So if you're gonna say the truth about it or what you think about it, like, just know that. So in that spirit, what is your review of Saltburn? <laughs> well, here's what I'll say. First of all, she's got my vote. <laughs> that little and reviewer. Say, that little was reviewer me. was yeah. me. Where's your letterbox, Mama? Okay. I actually don't have one, and I feel like you don't need it. it's. Yeah, now's the perfect time to not have one. Yeah, actually. I think the moment's passed. I think you're right. Um, what I will say is two things. A, it's hard to be like, it's not that deep. I just had like, it, yeah. It, I'm not. I'm not on a round table with other critics at Entertainment Weekly arguing that something is good or bad. Right. I'm just like oh, on a podcast. Just on a podcast. You're a clown. And the other thing is, I agree with what you're saying about Promising Young Woman, where it's like, I'm. Who am I to to start yelling about how it's not, how it's this or it's that when right. I'm sort of maybe not the intended audience for it? What's amazing about intended Saltburn? Audience though. But like here's that. the thing: Saltburn is about gay guys, so yeah, that's sure. where we come in. They should have put that in the trailer. It, they sort of did. So for the gay guys, that's where we come in. <laughs> because I'm like, because all the gay guys that were like, I'm gonna stay silent about promising young women. This is, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sit this one out. Now they're coming back with a vengeance, and I actually think there's gonna be like an overreaction where all the gay guys are gonna be protesting outside Emerald Fennell's house. And you know who I think loves Saltburn? You know, everyone that loves Saltburn right now, like straight. I can only describe as promising young women. Well, they're yes. Yes, exactly. Well, it is a lot of promising young women are coming a lot out of, of the woodwork to say they <laughs> fucking love Saltburn, and I'm like, I have to say something. Step yeah. aside, sweetie. Yeah, because this is our moment. Mm -hmm. And because when and, you're licking cum out of a bathtub, that's actually my that that's like my thing. To be clear, have you seen it? No, but I know that he licks up cum out of a bathtub. He does, and I actually, uh, I did think. So the, the movie is sort of a series of things that are meant to be memes. Yeah, yeah, but it's fine. People, you're this, kidding. <laughs> <laughs> like it's like which I do respect she's like she's seen how the internet works and she's like well I'm gonna make a movie that is sort of a series of moments that are that are like she did what yeah one next to the other and I do think that one was the most shocking to me where I was like oh I've never seen this before you know what here's what I'll say she's like and and I I don't say this in a in a pejorative way yeah but her style tends towards the pulpy Right? Mm -hmm. Why shouldn't, like, so, so we're all talking about her the way that you talk about any pulpy male filmmaker. It's sure. not negative. Like, you know, so she's not Greta Gerwig yet. You know what I mean? So everything that she makes isn't, like, you know, necessarily, like, critically foolproof. Like, it's just, like, but, you know, so we're allowed to talk about her and say, like, yeah, she's, like, a pulpy filmmaker. It's, it's not, It's not like, fuck women that we say that. No. It's just, you know, you're commenting on her style and tendencies. Correct. What? I <laughs> no, you're right. I, <laughs> I was just letting it land. You know, I was giving it yeah, space. Yeah, you're letting it land and giving it space. Yeah. <laughs> just like I gave, I will give Salper when I see it, and I will see it. Oh, I'll, I will hold space for Salper. To be clear, I, I, I was gay guys in it. By the way, I was yeah. like, I was having a good time. Like I, I'm. I, I was like Rosamund Pike was doing great. Oh yeah. Carrie Mulligan was doing great. All 100%. the actors were great. And you, and you love Jacob Elordi. You know, I will say I resisted him for so long, and it's you actually can't deny that he's a good actor. I do stand yeah. Jacob Elordi. Do you watch Euphoria? I feel like Euphoria. Yeah, is I your love culture. Euphoria. You love yeah. it. I'm addicted. So can I say something? Yeah. You sort of give Sydney Sweeney. <laughs> oh, I see it. Yeah. <laughs> That's the nicest thing anyone's ever said to me. I know. Did yeah. you enjoy working with Dakota on Madam Web or whatever? Oh, it was so, so amazing. Um, he was in my. He was with my mother in the Amazon <laughs> Reaching Spiders right before she died. Right before she Wait, died. Wait, I'm sorry. So Sydney Sweeney is a superhero. She's, she's gonna be. She becomes. A and superhero she's literally right like. Now. She's like a. We're supposed to believe that Sydney. It's like one of those things. She's where like a nerd. Sydney she's Sweeney has glasses. glasses. Oh and she's no. Like, you guys, we have to get to class. Seriously, like, I have huge tits. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, me, you, and are my huge tits. Have Sydney to get Sweeney to class. being like, we have to save them. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah, love no, the way she speaks. I'm addicted. I do too, and I wish I could do it better. I mean, it really is. Because I sort of I have thought, never been happier. 
Wow. Okay, wait. Should we do our first segment? Yeah, I think we should. Okay. Remember when this episode was supposed to be about Santa? Oh, I it still, still will I be. Still it still it will be. be called Santa. It still will it still be. Will it's be. called okay. Santa, and you will promote your album. Great. <laughs> Okay, Matt, our first segment is called Straight Shooters, and in this segment we're going to ask you a series of rapid-fire questions to gauge your familiarity with and complicity in straight culture. Can I say something? I'm, like, so excited. <laughs> you know, this is my favorite thing, and I can't believe we're here already. I Wait, know. does that mean, like, the podcast is, like, almost over? No, no this, this is, is the, the first segment. This is the okay, first segment. Good, 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 because I feel like we're just getting started. like, maybe it's because when I've been on this podcast, it's gone so off the rails that Straight Shooters doesn't happen until later. Sure, 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 yeah, sure, sure. It just yeah, sort yeah. of, like, triggered me. No, for no. a Can I say I was triggered? And that is over. Okay. Yeah, we can hold space for that. Oof. Normally, it's like twenty minutes in. But <laughs> and I think it was. there is no normal. George was what, fifteen minutes late. Yeah. Oh, all right. Yeah, he was too busy well, trying on all his different Santa hats. He was looking at. He, yeah, he had more than one. Yeah, I'm in kidding. His, all right, let's stay on message, Emerald Fennell. First question. <laughs> okay, Matt. Yeah. The Windy City or the Mindy Project? Ooh. I'm gonna say the Windy City. Mm. Love the Windy City, love Chicago. Can't wait to go there on tour. <laughs> okay. MattRogersOfficial.com. Um, really I'm like trying to movie. decide which of the ones I have written I'm going to do. We're, we'll cut this out. Don't worry. I will seem so on it. No, leave it in. People um, need to know. Kissing I, under the mistletoe or pissing into the toilet bowl? <laughs> I would say pissing into the toilet bowl because I would hate to eliminate that. As of an option, course. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Okay. Pronouncing. Also, kissing on the mistletoe is very public. That's true. Okay, pronouncing Chipotle Chipotle or saying hey girl hey to Kathy Hochul. <laughs> hey girl hey to Kathy Hochul. <laughs> yeah, that would be an amazing feeling. Because I know that she would know it was laced with arsenic. <laughs> Deck the halls with boughs of holly or hold my calls, I'm eating a bialy. <laughs> hold my calls, I'm eating a bialy. <laughs> okay, a thought leader or a bot follower? Ooh. <laughs> a thought leader. <laughs> the three wise men? Or the four fabulous ladies of the original Sex in the City. The four fabulous ladies of the <laughs> yes! original Sex in the City. Okay. The Bill of Rights or Pillow Fights? The pillow Fights. <laughs> Let's have fun. Um, oh, Holy Night uh-huh. or Go, I'll Miss My Flight. <laughs> go, I'll Miss My Flight. I oh, like but that. But that's so stressful. That really tells a story, though. Yeah. Because it's not I need to go. It's you go so that I can get my flight. Well, it's Meryl yeah. Streep in the back of the car in Devil Wears Prada at the end going, Go. Yeah. Oh. Which is which is what I always think of. And now, are you guys done? Because I mm-hmm. have them for you. Wow. Okay, this is crazy. Okay, go, go, go. Okay. Red and green Christmas or white Christmas? I'm going to go white Christmas. White Christmas. Have yourself a merry little Christmas or have yourself another cocktail, honey. Life is too fucking short, quite frankly. <laughs> have yourself have another, another cocktail, cocktail, honey. Life, Life is, is too, too short, short, quite frankly. frankly. Oh, holy night. Or, girl, we've heard this song too many times. It's a lot of screaming. <laughs> I'm going to go, oh, holy oh, night. Oh, holy night. <laughs> Gay. <laughs> Gay sex on Christmas or gay sex on Thanksgiving? Gay sex on Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Three Wise Men or TLC the band? TLC the band. TLC the band. Frankincense or myrrh? Myrrh. Myrrh. Do you know what that is? What is it? (sighs) Problematic. (laughs) Elves are fine or union uprising now? We need to get Fran on the case. Union uprising now. We have to be pro labor. Oh, I was like, what is the connection? But it's that elves should unionize. Of course. Yeah. That was sort of. Let's <laughs> Mrs. Claus or Santa's side chick who lives somewhere down in the greater DC area, Bernadette. <laughs> okay, see, I actually am going to say Mrs. Claus. Me too. Yeah. I have to stand. Stream, have you heard of Christmas or suffer the consequences? Stream, Stream have you heard, heard of, of Christmas. Christmas? Correct. Do you know I have a lot more? Oh, uh, oh please. <laughs> I mean, go and keep the, the music going. <laughs> Hark, the herald angels sing, uh-huh. or what the angels should be doing is taking singing lessons because these women are tone deaf, period. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what the angels should <laughs> be doing is taking <laughs> singing <laughs> lessons <laughs> because these angels period. are tone deaf, period. Extina's Xmas or the legendary Nat King Cole? The legendary Nat King hey, See, Cole. I'm going to go Extina's Xmas for that one. <laughs> Bing Crosby or Free Britney? Ooh, free Britney. I think she's been freed quite a bit. <laughs> Frosty the Snowman or Rudolph, who's actually a big slut? Frosty the Snowman. Frosty the Snowman. I'm I'm always confused with Rudolph. Are, why? Are, like, is he an adult or a child? Yeah. They need why to are all the other out. like? I'm a, I'm a little bit like all the other reindeer are adults and they are actually at their job, and then Rudolph is coming in sort of like. 
he wants to have it both ways. Yeah. He's like, don't underestimate me because I have a red nose, but I'm underage. It's also like, <laughs> he's that type where it's like, well, you're not as experienced. Like, actually, you need to calm down. Exactly. And like, put in the work. And, and yeah, maybe you have this God-given gift of this nose, but it's like, it's, that's fucked up. I don't like, also, so like, is cut the he, line and is lead he, the sleigh? Like, is he gay? Like, I'm, like... Is he gay? Is that what you said? Yeah. Like, <laughs> is he gay? Like, what is... They have not actually decided for all the mythologizing about Rudolph. I'm like... Where is the oh docu series? Can I stop you? It's called a metaphor. Obviously, Rudolph is gay. He's gay. It's, he's queer. It's a queer narrative. Okay, but he's he also a child. Born different. He's gay, a but he's third. also a child. Okay, Pizza Gate. Tons of gay kids out there. Pizza Gate. <laughs> yeah. Is that what you said? <laughs> this must be Stradio Lab. You see what I'm dealing with? It's whatever. Chaos. Take that back to the DNC. <laughs> I would like to pitch a guest for you guys. Oh, okay. So. You know, Pizza recently. Gate or Pitch a Guest? <laughs> pitch a Guest. <laughs> um, okay, so by the way, segment over. We can stop the music. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> by the way, I had one more, which I can clearly Matt, just, tell you. <laughs> just finish your stri- I love that you keep like fin- not finishing them and then being like, I have more. You guys are fighting. I have one more. What is it? And it's a typo in my phone and it made me laugh. Oh, okay. okay. Glinda or elephant? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have no, to that's go actually with, genius. Um, that's Glinda. Glinda. I mean, that's really good because <laughs> you know the the segment is constantly evolving yeah. and it's sort of a you yeah. know a metaphor for society. Mm-hmm. And I think that is such a great direction for it to go in, where it's literally just two words. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wait, I want to know, but. So oh, the, the other pitch. day we were doing our 92nd Street Y with the amazing Betty Gilpin. Yes, uh-huh. where we got a shout out actually. And yes. I would say approximately 5% of the audience recognized the name of the pod. No, they all did. They were just being respectful. I okay. Think. <laughs> I think Lady Gaga would be an amazing Stradio Lab guest. I know you. Yeah. That's well, one I, of the nicest things you could say. I and think I, she'd be way better on this show than Las Culch. I don't know if I that's actually true. completely disagree. I think I 100% disagree. Well, that's really rude. <laughs> now say why you think well, that. Well, first of all, I'll I think. Just take it. I think Joe Calderon would absolutely crush on Stradio Lab, but I think Lady Gaga. <laughs> she couldn't. We'll she say. Couldn't keep Joe Calderon. Not again. I shouldn't doubt her. I think. I think if we were to have Lady Gaga on, don't get me wrong, it would be insane viewing and sort of. I think the way that we wouldn't connect would be incredible because we do this thing when we have guests on that like don't come from our specific New York comedy circle, where we're sort of like, so like, what do you know about? Um, like so open mics like we Who's have this the guest you've like, had that you've been like oh my god oh my god oh my god the most like, we just like do don't do? know how to connect like we'll be uh-huh. like like we'll be like okay well um so singing tell us about that that's our I think our readers mm. um accuse us of being sycophantic when we have a guest oh, sure, on sure, sure. that we're not having a conversation like this where I can like but see I would say we're on the opposite like, hey faggot and it's yeah. like you know not a big deal that's like, what you I should say, say to Lady Gaga hey faggot to Katie Couric <laughs> well you could try I did I did call her a top well oh, I mean that's, that's nice. just a fact <laughs> um but, I do think we're on the opposite end of the spectrum, as where we all, we I mean, for so long we refused to promote anything that anyone was doing, and it's like, yeah. well, at that point you're just being rude, actually. Right, right, right. And also, you, I don't like to do that either, though. I mean, it, and yeah, there's also no subtle clunky. way to do it. There comes a time when it when the podcast grows to a certain age where suddenly you start getting. I'm sure Olivia, you have to field these requests. I'm, that that like if people will be like, hey, so and so wants to promote their thing, yeah. And the guest is so exciting who's pitched that you're like, oh my god, of course. Mm. And then all of a sudden, you're promoting X Y Z's mm. book X Y Z that you've had to actually read. <laughs> oh, oh, you sure. read the books? I read the book every single time. Oh, that's amazing, mm-hmm. huh? Yeah, we can't relate to that. <laughs> You'd think neither could I, but and yet, yeah, yeah. You know, so we, just don't. Yeah, I mean, but. To have Lady Gaga on, I mean, I'm trying to think like to promote to promote Justice for Art, uh, Justice for Art, Pop. yeah, Folie a Deux, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. No, no. I think she, again, well, I that should be a that, huge that, mistake not having her on because then the topic could be Joker. That is, true. Of yes. Course. Well, I do think actually her promoting that would be a great opportunity for her. To well, do when she's in, yeah, her like fucked up mind era, like I think that will be really amazing. Yeah, she's like smoking crack on the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. That She's like, sorry, sense. I'm still in character. And then she knifes us in the heart. What I loved was her performance on the Oscars, which she had canceled because she was too, like, I guess, fucked up from Joker and exhausted. And then and she then showed she up. she decided to do it. And it was so clear that it was already press for Joker Folio. Do, she was yeah. Like, I just um, wrote this one and it means a lot to me. 
And then she did that song from Top Gun. She's also wearing a yeah. head-to-toe Carhartt and literally, like, driving a tractor. <laughs> no, she was dressed in Jacqueline Novak drag. Well, that's, yeah, yeah. it was just, like, so aggressively casual. It was She so was dressed funny. in Jacqueline Novak drag. Well, it was so funny, too, because it's like, I'm being normal, but it's like the shirt literally has, like, creases in it. Like, it was just out of a package. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, I'm you've never worn you. these clothes in your life. And then it was, like, clearly the best thing of the whole night. Yeah. yeah. Say it for Billy. We love Billy. Billy Eilish. Oh mm. yes, I know her. Yeah, she, she makes music. She certainly does with her brother. Now this is an interesting question: Would she be better on Colch or or our podcast, Billy Eilish? Me, Billy Eilish. What do you, Eilish, think? What yeah, do you what think? think? Oh, Billy Eilish. I love Billy Eilish. I actually would do. she be better on Las Colchristas or oh, on Radio? Lab? I think she'd be better on our show. Actually, sorry, I sort yeah, of. I agree. Well, what what do you think? No, I agree because I actually don't think she would get the joke of straight culture. Really? Yeah, I think she'd be like, Dracker. what do you mean? No, I think, you know what, to be honest with you, mm, I think Gen Z, by and large, mm-hmm. would appreciate this show more. Uh-huh. But I think that <laughs> Billie only... Eilish would like our show more. I agree. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. I, I think... get the sense that Billie Eilish might be a Bowen Yang fan. Oh. And that might be exciting for her. Sure, sure, mm-hmm. sure. I do sort of think Lord would get the straight culture joke. Lord would actually put her number one guest. That's yeah. what I want. Yeah. Here's who do great on Straight Your Lab. Lord, mm. Gaga, yeah. Solange. Well, <laughs> I mean, Solange would be literally number one guest. She would come in with a list of topics. Yeah. Um, she'd be like... She would burn this down. Yeah. I love yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. There'd be a whole uh, PhD on it. Yeah. I'm like, she used to live in New Orleans. I feel like her topic would be Mardi Gras. And she'd be like talking about all the tourists coming yeah. into town for Mardi Gras. I think SZA would be amazing on this show. Yes. Here's who I think would be great on Lost Culture. Mm. Taylor Swift. Well, yeah. of course. Cardi B. Yeah. Sure. I think Beyonce would be amazing at saying thank you to what we say to her the entire episode. Well, she would also have a team of writers come up with her perfect topic, her perfect like moment that said culture is for me, culture that said culture is yeah, for yeah. me. And it would be like really sort of unexpected. I'm trying to think, what do you think her culture that said culture is for me would be? It would be like learning from women Ooh, in Beyonce? my life. Yeah. It, it would, would be, be Tina Turner. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, and that sure, would be sure. something that went through like the whole team and they were like, well, you know, like, you should say Tina yeah, Turner because yeah, yeah. a it's true, and b it would con- it would actually it probably is something she could speak to. She would also I will say this about her: she would say one self deprecating joke about House of Darion that the team of writers wrote for her, mm-hmm. and that would be the viral moment. You know who would do great on both podcasts? Mm. Ariana. Yeah. T. <laughs> <laughs> and that's amazing. She, she has would range. crush both podcasts, and she'd sh- I bet she would. Cement her status yeah. as a legend. Yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> you know what? Be so good. It's so cruel. Our world. Um, <laughs> Period. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that this this woman Ariana Grande yeah. has to constantly be cementing her status as a legend. Yeah. At what point is it just? Some, when does that cement dry? When do we just accept it? Because it's like, wait, when does that cement dry? Is an incredible thing to say. <laughs> I mean, you are dry. you are being like fully, you know, Jonathan Franzen right now. Well, it's just like she's done so much mm-hmm. in such a short amount of time and changed the conversation globally over yeah. and over again. That's true. And yet we're still like, and when is she gonna cement it? It's you know, so messed up. I recently looked at like, whatever, like, so because so I, I like have like an artist page on Spotify now, so you can see like your monthly listeners. And I was like, I wonder who of the girls has the most monthly listeners. And obviously, it's Taylor. But oh, sure. did you know Ariana has more monthly listeners than Beyonce? And I was like, I thought I think that's weird because Ariana hasn't released music or had like a musical moment in a long time. Yet Beyonce is coming off the Renaissance World Tour. But then I think that sometimes we forget just how much. How many pop hits Ariana has? Sure, sure Ariana sure. is like Ariana actually can be fully bachelorette party, like one hundred percent. One last time, yeah, that's playing. <laughs> Beautiful, yeah. Um, wait, I'll, should we get into the yes? Topic? Let's get yeah. The, yes. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, 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 no. I, the only was gonna say the, something incendiary. The only point. No, it was not incendiary. I just, I do think people have not. We haven't fully grappled with the fact that I'm a huge. I'm a declared Renaissance stan. Yeah. But Renaissance is like Beyonce is fully indie era. Like what she's doing in Renaissance mm-hmm. is like no longer top forty. No, uh, she doesn't try anymore. It pop just diva. Yeah, 
I think that that actually stopped a very long time ago. I guess that's and true. Yeah. Like, I I kind of love the fact that she doesn't give a fuck. I, I do too, yeah. but I'm, I'm, I'm saying it sort of makes sense mm-hmm. that she has, in terms of just purely numbers, fallen off because she's become more of a sophisticated... Yeah. Yeah. Solange's influence. You know what I say? She is. Whenever anyone's like, what was better? Like, let's let's compare. They ask that annoying question of like, what was better, Eras Tour or Renaissance? And I'm like, it's so different because A, it's like Beyonce is a performer and an artist and Taylor Swift is like a pop star and an artist. And so she's doing her thing. And like, but what's different really about the Eras Tour and the Renaissance World Tour is Taylor is per- collectively performing her entire career and Beyonce is doing her renaissance album plus some other stuff beyonce is not saying here's my life's work here it is cumulatively i'm not there yet whereas taylor is kind of saying here's everything i've ever done there's mm-hmm. not going to be an eras tour part two well maybe there will well, just, I, mean, yeah. I mean but what i'm saying is like she is not she's looking back in a way that beyonce is like not and so in that regard, like it's totally different. Yes. Like, sure, sure, sure. This and is a ch- this is like a collective thing for Taylor, whereas like this is a chapter for Beyonce. You know what I'm saying? I do yeah. know what you're saying. It's almost like Taylor Swift is looking back and Beyonce is looking forward. And you could even translate that to Taylor Swift. Why are you rolling conservative, your eyes as you say this? A conservative and Beyonce is progressive. <laughs> If, we're we're Cody hearing, right if now. we were to say something, that's what we would say. That is, I guess, what my uh, point would be. But just extrapolating what you were saying. What do you that think said, about Beyonce? I love, um, what's that album I like where she like raps? Oh, Re- Reputation. Reputation. Oh, yeah, of course. The album where she raps. <laughs> her rap album. The way that you describe Reputation. I love her rap For me, album. Reputation is Taylor being like wearing one of those like Ed Hardy sle- full sleeve tattoo shirts. <laughs> and being like, I'm punk rock. <laughs> you, you're saying it's so funny. You're not going to be able to make out with any Swifties anymore after this. And they love to kiss. No, they forgive. Oh, please. Swifties they forgive. forgive so quickly. That's actually true. It's actually messed up. They need to have a, more of a backbone. What yeah. do you think about Beyonce p- potentially performing at the Sphere? Is that a thing? That's Can I tell you something? You have to, I mean, Beyonce has literally performed like in like Dubai for a collection of all war criminals like you have to just accept that that's what's going on well I I have accepted it I love it I mean it makes me stand her more like I'm like well I don't know about that (laughs) there's something where I'm like you know you are flawed too and it's flaws and all (laughs) yeah it's so beautiful yeah I mean the sphere the promise of the sphere is I can't tell if it actually lives up to anything or if it's just a gimmick but either way I'm kind of in I think we have to go yeah, to to understand what what really is happening, and I think we'll like what we see <laughs> because that's what it's designed to be. Yeah, to be and enjoyable. That's the thing about things in Vegas, which I actually said before we even got on here, I'm like, should we do the topic? Well, of that Vegas? was one of your topic options. Yeah, and you know, I'll tell you, I've never been to Vegas. Oh know. Jesus! I Let's actually... go. The three of us will all fuck. I promise you. <laughs> like, if you don't think you're gonna fuck your friends in Vegas, I have news for you. Oh well, to be clear, I would I would be so scared of all the other humans around me that I would I would be it would be a trauma response that I'd be uh-huh. like, well, I have to fuck my friends. One hundred percent, you'd be so frightened. The things that happen in like Piranha, which is the one gay bar there. Off the you've been to Vegas? No, I've never been. Oh my god, you guys! I'm like, Beyonce like, announces this fear. We all have to go. I, to me, Vegas is like you're walking down the street and you see a woman fully get run over by a car, and you just have to be like, keep walking, keep walking. Yeah, keep and then going. you go buy like a fifty dollar hamburger. Like, that's Vegas to me. Yeah. Um, that's why I'm saying let's go. <laughs> okay, wait. So the topic that you did uh, bring yeah. is actually Santa. Yeah. I'm looking at him. <laughs> I'm looking at the young, hot version. Oh, my God. I bet Santa looked a lot like you right now, young. I actually think that's true. So what? <laughs> what is straight about Santa to you? Um, The fixation on him just because we're told, like, the- first of all, can I say something? Yeah. He makes no effort to self-improve. Whoa. What do you mean by that? (laughs) Yeah, I want to know more. I just feel like this is a guy who... Here's my biggest problem with Santa. Okay. The the erasure of Mrs. Claus. Well, we... Yes, of course. I mean... Yeah. Okay, so yes, in that way... He's not good to his wife. You never see her. You don't. And you know what? This is actually... I think this is something that's very straight about Santa. It is a classic male genius narrative. It's like there is one Santa. He, I mean, he is the 
you know, who's a famous male genius that we romanticize? Thomas like, Edison. He's the Thomas Edison. <laughs> Who, by the way, tested on animals, and people don't talk about that. No one's talking about that. No, they Blow don't. It up. He was a psychopath. Yeah. Okay. Dig him up and shame him. Okay. I mean, this, I'm happy we have lights. This cancel culture is, has gone too far. <laughs> If we cancel Thomas, if Edison we cancel now, Thomas Edison, and people I mean, were like, "I'm actually not turning on the lights in my house because Thomas Edison used to test on animals." No, I'm doing, I'm doing, I'm acknowledging whenever I turn on the light, the animals that suffered under his hand. Um, I do want to say, I think Mrs. Claus and Mr. Claus have, you know, I think they're just not codependent. I think what they do is so tasteful, where they have like private life most of the time. And then come Christmas, you know, yes, he does his job. And yes, there's a performance to it, of course. But, you know, it's selfless still. I want to reveal that, like, Mrs. Claus is like Erica Jane. <laughs> like a young performer. Sure. Young, snatched, shows up at events when she has to. Yeah. And, like, has, like, a huge budget for her dance pop career. That would be amazing. Yeah. Do you but know I don't think that's true. I think I, she's I, probably an older no. woman. No. And... Well, she, hopefully an older woman. I feel like you don't I would want hate Santa to, I would to be... hate to hear that he was dating someone much younger. But Santa's then I grooming? Worry for her. That would be horrible. I would hate to hear that Santa was a groomer. <laughs> I, I would hate of, to start that conversation. I sort of think it's even worse. I think there's a sort of Leonardo DiCaprio situation happening where Mrs. Claus, in fact, is not one person, but she's being changed out every five years. Now, but that would she be doesn't upsetting. have a public enough profile for anyone to notice. Oh, this is my what I'm God. saying, too. Is it's like, what if there's like 15 Mrs. Clauses? Yeah. Oh my God, that's another horrifying thought. There's never it's been like a Mrs. Hugh Claus Hefner situation. Yeah, that's yeah. So There's actually sad. three Mrs. Clauses. Oh, Holly, <laughs> Madison. I don't know their no, names. No, Holly Madison Holly. is her name. <laughs> Holly, Jolly, Jolly, <laughs> and Chloe. And <laughs> Wait, what are their names? Bridget, Holly, Bridget, and Kendra, Kendra. <laughs> That, I, wow. I love that. I love thinking about three young Mrs. Clauses. Oh, my God. And they actually have the Playboy Playmates. Oh, I love actually. That is so I love what actually. Santa is. I love I love, love actually. <laughs> Laura Linney's a treasure. I do actually think that sort of ties it all together. Santa is a Hugh Hefner figure, and he has three Mrs. Clauses. And in approximately 250 years, they will finally be ready to tell their story, much like the three Playmates did. One thing about Santa, too, is like you, you describe him as a Leonardo DiCaprio type. At least Santa is not polluting because. <laughs> well, is Leo well, he, polluting? Well, oh, well he's, he's, a yacht. Huge he's an environment. about the environment yeah. and is on yachts, and you have to imagine private planes. Private planes. You think he flies commercial? I don't think so, honey. <laughs> yeah, I would have seen a photo of him sleeping in the first class section. Exactly. Okay. We would have seen people be posting like, oh my God, Leo's on my flight. I'm sleeping next to Leo. Ah! <laughs> okay, so he flies private. Uh, that would okay. be me. I would break my silence on Instagram if I was sleeping next to Leo on the plane. I recently took a flight, and next to me was what I can only describe as an Oscar-winning A-list celebrity, and I couldn't believe that that was happening. But then I was like, yeah, I mean, this person isn't famous enough to like do a private plane situation. But Drag like, him. Him or her. <laughs> him. Like, iconically him. Like in a bad, was it like an exciting one or was it like a? It was a notable one, and what? And I will say, no, I can't. Can say you anymore. hint? At, I've hinted so much. Okay, okay, okay. And I will tell you off air, and it's so funny what they were coming to the place we were coming to to do. Well, we had a story like that where we were. Or wait, were we on the same flight when this happened? When I saw Michael Imperioli. Uh, it was no, just my flight. flight. So yeah. I was on a flight to Minneapolis, and Mike Limpirioli and another guy from The Sopranos were on it. And I, this was during the strike, and I looked it up, and I was like, well, surely if they're traveling together, they're doing some sort of Sopranos event. I looked it up. They were doing, like, a Sopranos fan event at, like, a casino in Minneapolis. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that makes me feel better about everything. Like, <laughs> or also worse? I don't know. I think it made me feel a little bit worse, because it was at sort one of point like, oh, you... this never ends. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah, yeah, You yeah. can be on the one of the greatest shows of all time and be like, totally. and now I have to fly to Minneapolis to, to a casino to I'm do I'm gonna say what it was. I was sitting next to Jared Leto on a plane, <gasps> and he was flying to New York to climb the Empire State Building. Oh, oh my God. God. There you go. That's what it is. There's can the I ask you a question? Why were you afraid of saying that? Yeah, great because question. Because As someone who lives out loud. I feel like someone who like is just traveling 
traveling on a plane like shouldn't necessarily have their spot blown up about like oh sure you know but what I'm saying it's at like, this point like we know cool. he came to New York to but do it's that. just so funny that he yes. what he ultimately came to do of that course. I feel like I have to share I sat next to Jared Leto on a plane I sneezed he said Gazunta oh no yeah and I was like okay and his energy was very Jared Leto you know what yeah. I mean like it was or Leto it's just very like it was he was really walking in his truth yeah. his hair was 18 feet long yes he came on the plane last like he he had like an intense energy and when I sneeze he said Gazunta I turn around look him in his eyes it's Jared Leto he sees me recognize him he said how you doing and I was like good wow. uh, I'm a fan and then I looked out the window next thing I know he was on top of the Empire State Building because he climbed it yeah, that, not because he took the elevator to the top. No, no, no. no. He, climbed he climbed it. it. <laughs> that whole narrative was confusing to me because I was sort of like, "Why is this happening again?" Because he, he, there was a reason, right? Like, didn't he do it? For I don't know that there was Sam. The way and where were we flying from? By the way, Vegas. Oh no. I, I mean, again, these people like <laughs> this. This episode is about the black hole inside of all of us. Ooh. Where it's like, why can't anyone just be content? <laughs> I didn't know that's what this is about. I thought no. it was called Santa. You're so right. Like, <laughs> because Jared Leto has had a successful career to be sure for decades, mm -hmm. and even in acting, and even somewhat in music. Mm -hmm. And here he is saying, well, certainly that's music. not enough. Yes. I actually need to fly to New York to climb the Empire State Building for not really a clear reason, except that I need more attention. Yeah, for well, he him, did perform on the top of it. So it did loop back to He music. did a monologue from Dallas Buyers Club. <laughs> <laughs> to remind everyone. To remind everyone. And it's eligible for Tony. Oh, yeah. and a spoken yeah. word Grammy because it was recorded. Someone yeah. recorded it on an iPhone. He got contender. And it's being released on Big Money Players Network. And because it was in New York, it's Tony eligible. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's how that works. That's amazing. Wow. Yeah. Well, I really hope Jared Leto EGOTs for climbing the Empire State Building and doing a monologue. It, I mean, he would deserve it more than some other EGOT winners. Okay. Yeah, well, name one. <laughs> I refuse. See, that's where it ends. And yes. remember when we said in the beginning like, mm. the, the, the trap of having a successful podcast is you get scared to say things. Yeah. I'm sort of punching that idea in the absolute face by revealing Tea. I sat next to Jared Leto on the plane so that he could climb. It's so myself. fascinating to me that, because, you know, I've known you for many years. You really have. You have, you have said so many. You yesterday. You have so ma said so <laughs> hey, many things that are more, like, incendiary and revealing than that you sat next to Jared Leto on a plane and yet I can so see you be nervous about this one specific thing and I'm like what is it about sitting next to Jared Leto on yeah. a plane that is making me nervous like you have know. on this episode said like more sort of controversial things really yeah yeah I don't know. I guess it's like when when it comes to someone else's like you know autonomy and per, sure, sure, like sure. personal space. It's just like, but also it's like it's been long enough now, yeah. aka a week and a half. And <laughs> and just because he climbed the Empire State Building, I do think it's so funny. That and is also funny. people are the people. I I said on the last episode of Last Culture Recess that I had sat next to someone on a plane, and so many people were asking like, who is it? Mm -hmm. Who is it? Who is it? Is it Jared Leto? Is it Jared Leto? Is it Jared Leto? That I feel like at this point, it's like I've kind of already revealed it. Yeah. Sure, sure, you know sure, I mean? sure, sure. And I think, by the way, he would play an amazing young Santa as well. Well, I Oh, gonna, that would be an interesting I was going to ask. He's fearless. Who craves more attention, Jared Leto or Santa? I think Santa. Yeah. Which is saying a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I do want to go a little bit into more Santa being straight because okay. I think there's a lot there. So... Where did he come from? Well, this is, okay, so this is the other thing. Is you know the famous thing is like he was invented by Coca Cola. Uh -huh. What was that uh, actually true? Is that true? Oh yes. my god, so there's nothing. Then, then this is even better than I ever could have imagined. It, it invented is, by Coca Cola? I feel insane. This is like something that I feel like everyone talks about and is and everyone. Well, is, is that why he dresses in red? Yes. I mean, Coca Cola definitely popularized him. Where do you but think he came from? The Bible, George. <laughs> I mean, th this is so funny to me. <laughs> Corinthians? <laughs> Corinthians 10 2. Santa walked the plains. Bringing he, gifts to the where boys he and met girls. His wife, My Melissa. point is, Santa is quite literally a corporate mascot. He is oh, Flo 100%. the Progressive Lady. He is Flo the Progressive Lady, but with wow. a beard. 
And I, the only reason he's more respected than Flo, because he's a man. Wait, 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 <laughs> wait, wait, wait. So if you think that Santa was invited by Coca-Cola, how do you explain like Sinterklaas or whatever, or like the many like... No, I'm not saying the sure. concept of Saint Nick was invented by Coca-Cola. I'm saying what he looks like, spe- how we imagine him in the American imagination was invented by Coca-Cola. Got it. So got they it, reinvented it, it, him it. for for the modern age. Well, it's sort of like how Disney reinvented when you careful, think of- careful. They own everything. <laughs> Stop and they're watching. Seriously, I'm looking out for you. This podcast is huge. When Just you're thinking oh, you say, I'm being carried Bob away Iger by will come in here. I'm being carried away by a cane. It's Bob Iger. <laughs> Um, you literally just disappear. I disappear. <laughs> it's sort of like in Marvel. What? Yeah. When they the disappear, they're reaping. Oh, that's Hunger Games. Oh, well, I don't know what I... You know, yeah, when they whatever. start... We it's, get it. it's, it's the dissolving. Yeah, the yeah. dissolving. Oh, the yeah. snap. The snap. <laughs> My point is, in the same way that, like, Disney did not invent Cinderella, but when you think Cinderella, you think blue dress. That is what I'm saying about Santa. Got it. Okay. I understand. Yeah. So this is what's confusing to me is, first of all, I'm on this podcast live finding out that Coca-Cola invented Santa. I'm also on this podcast live finding out that Disney didn't invent Cinderella. <laughs> Did they not invent her? I thought they invented her. Is Cinderella not one of the various fairy no, tales? No, yes, but that doesn't mean she was invented. Just like Disney didn't invent Elsa. Hans Christian Andersen. That's what I'm saying. Elsa. It did, but that's what I'm saying. It did not invent Cinderella, but it like made her what you picture. Right. So basically, like when we see like stunning, like like iconic Beltris, like in top of a fortress, wearing that like long blonde iconic braid, doing let the storm rage mm-hmm. on, we think of Disney, but like actually, that's just a popularization, exactly, and a commercialization exactly, of exactly Elsa by Hans Christian Andersen, who is actually a frightening villainous figure, much like Murderous. Thomas Edison. <laughs> Correct. Um, and I'm, I am upset that the lights are still on. Yeah, of course. It's very <laughs> I think disrespectful. This is very. It's saying a lot without saying. It's anti animal. Yeah, of course. What we're doing here <laughs> by having lights on is anti animal. Of course. Um, okay. It's okay. Santa. All right. So my, my, my only point was he's inherently, uh, you know, capitalist. He's a corporate uh, mascot. Okay. Sure. So there's that. He's a corporate mascot, symbol of toxic masculinity, mm-hmm. doesn't respect his three wives. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, is a liar. Is a liar. He can't make it to every house in the world he in can't 24 make hours. You can't do it. That's true. He's a liar. I have a song about that on my album, Have You Heard of Christmas. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it's an expose, actually. Track five. Yeah. I also, you know, I know we talked about Rudolph already, but there is animal abuse happening. 100%. Well, the animal element to Santa, I think, is one of the straighter things where it's sort of, you know, there's always a return to land. Yeah. Um, I think it's sort of, you know, farming culture. Talk about, like, wearing Carhartt. Yeah. It's, that's what it is to me. Mm-hmm. Um, he also employs a lot of people who are... You know, employees is actually something that's assumed. Yes, no, but and that's that was going to be my next point. So, I mean, he run, he's a he's like a CEO. He's like a Jeff Bezos figure. Oh, that's scary. That's yeah. scary. Well, I think one of the biggest lies of Santa, also uh, other than the houses, is that it's like <laughs> he's making these things. Like the whole narrative. I think we need to update the narrative. No, the elves make the toys, and people forget that. But even the elves make the toys. I'm like, then why is it a PlayStation? If you if you bonked a little wooden hammer on a piece of wood for eight hours yeah. why am I getting a PlayStation for Christmas well this is where we run into the whole thing where Santa is fake and everything that we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> no but this even as a child I remember being like this like disconnect, is a story that's this made disconnect up. is too <laughs> no, 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 no 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 this disconnect I found I think we need to update the narrative to make it more believable because I remember being a child and being like well if they're making it why does it come in a little plastic I think you were and also a why smart kid <laughs> yeah which ultimately comes with you know both the birth of imagination, but also the death of imagination. Of course. Well, well I wanted to believe the fantasy. Talk so about just update the narrative. And I'm really skipping around saying something shitty about Disney, and I'm really proud of us. <laughs> I, I would, n- first of all, because we'll have a blow dark to the neck. I, I, what you're saying about intelligence and imagination is so smart. It is mm-hmm. so difficult to find the right balance. Yeah. Of intelligence where you can have a sense of wonder but not ruin it for yourself correct yeah I've sometimes I meet people who are like smarter than me in like in a way that they can't do anything right. and I'm like oh my god I'm yep. so lucky like I barely <laughs> and you live in Brooklyn right yeah <laughs> yeah so okay but this is you're pointing to something interesting which is like just how open the logical fallacies of Santa are. Like when you're a kid, you're like, okay, so there's a different one in each mall. Mm-hmm. He's making things 
in the North Pole that I see at FAO Schwartz. Yeah. I know that that's where they are. Yeah. Each Santa I'm seeing looks different, has a slightly different outfit, is potentially a different race. Like, I know this is not all the same man. Yeah. yeah. And then, like, practically, yeah. eight, possibly nine if you count Rudolph, which you're allowed to do or not do canonically. Yeah. It's sort of like, way. is Pluto a planet? Right. <laughs> Eight, potentially nine. What you have to imagine are 250-pound reindeer yeah. land on my roof <laughs> with a sleigh that holds not just a, sorry, but plus-sized individual. Oh. oh. And also a bag with a gift for gifts <laughs> for every child in the world lands on my house. Yeah. And my house is what? Unharmed? Mm. There's a lot of logical fallacies. There's a lot of logical fallacies. <laughs> and I think... Santa is a is a myth for people that don't have object permanence. Like you have to <laughs> the be. The physics of it is insane. Yeah. So what? Like the are you saying that they that, that like yeah the the reindeer plop out of the skyland right on the house and nothing? Yeah. Okay, but counterpoint. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. If well, I was gonna to. say, what do you guys think of the culture? Um, what are your like moral rules around lying to children? Do it. Yeah. <laughs> I sort of agree. Yeah. I'm not gay. I'm different. I'm special. Can I yeah, actually I'm say not something? Gay. I'm can straight. I, can I say something yeah. about children? Yeah. Like, Please. this idea that everything affects them in adulthood. I'm not saying negative things. Obviously, like, don't traumatize children. But, like, this idea that, for instance, let's say, a little girl playing with a Barbie means that she's going to have, like, yeah, fucked up morphia. views on how women are supposed to be in society. Both my sisters played with Barbies. One's an engineer and one's a doctor. So yeah, riddle me that. And just, both, like, just like Barbie. <laughs> yeah, they're both snatched as hell. <laughs> yeah, they're both yeah. snatched as hell. fashionistas so to boot. So to, to speak of the Barbie film, <laughs> yeah. which I knew this was all going back yeah, to. Of course, yeah, yeah. it all does. You are very pro. Pro Barbie film? Yeah. You know, to me, Barbie oh, is... A, no, no, no. <laughs> to to me, yes or no. Barbie is a film that I felt like had so much just like colors and joy and everyone, and everyone was having fun that I was like, I'm not overthinking this. I'm gonna, and I, by the way, saw it in a theater full of young girls. Like, I went opening weekend in a sort of not in New York, in a sort of more suburban area. And I was like, I, who am I to start like intellectualizing Barbie? Like, everyone is having so much fun. Everyone's in pink. I, whatever. I mean, that but said, the movie intellectualizes Barbie. That said, That's we true. did enjoy Oppenheimer more and we're on record. <laughs> yeah. That's insane. We actually, you know, Bowen, this is the difference between y'all and us. <laughs> Bowen and I walked out of Oppenheimer halfway through. No way. We were both. We didn't even get to the bang. We were like, get out of here. No. We no, were both we were, literally. Bowen and I are both so, and this is one of the secrets about Bowen, we're both so stupid. <laughs> that like, and we both get so tired. <laughs> and like, and we're just like, I don't fucking care. Life is too short. We loved Oppenheimer. We loved so Oppenheimer. much. It was so oh weird. God. Yeah, because also we, you know, you guys can't comment about straight straight. He also in, in, in can we though? Way, I really think can. we're actually experts in it. And in fact, I went in. You know, of course, I would love to walk into that theater and hate it because yeah. then I could be sort of this gay guy who's above stuff. But instead, I'm taken by it and I'm actually moved. Yeah, well, I also think we have a real appreciation for like straight camp, like you Oppenheimer. Think that's what that was. Oppenheimer is a spectacle. I mean, it's like a, it's like it's not camp, isn't it though? Explosions. You think explosions Hats? are camp? We can't Emily Blunt. Into, I mean, when <laughs> it was camp, when he literally looked at his like hat and tie and like put it on like it was a Batman. I'm sorry. Costume. Did you see the person playing Einstein? It was someone literally doing like Drag Race Einstein the Rusical. He like was dropping his hat left and right. Yeah, come on. Okay, fine. I guess it's great. <laughs> so, but but I want to say my counterpoint to your Santa thing of like, it doesn't make sense, it's Ill illogical, is I'm almost like, and I know we've all been doing this, is sort of finding the logical fallacies and being like, the physics don't make sense. But isn't that sort of like toxic rationale? Like, isn't that sort of like of Neil, oh, Neil, Neil deGrasse so Tyson? Unfun. It's so yes. Neil deGrasse Tyson being 100%. like, oh, um, yeah. actually, the sleigh wouldn't float. So yeah. I'm sort of like, okay, well, then maybe what is almost queer about the Santa narrative is just the fully joyful embrace of something completely artificial and completely like uh, not real. You're so right. You're so right. I mean, it's very LGBTQ plus when he squeezes into a little thing and slides down the chimney. Well, sliding down the chimney, I mean, talk about Katy Perry in Vegas. <laughs> Like sliding down the chimney is literally Katy Perry singing with a talking toilet or whatever of she's course, doing in Vegas. Of course. I mean, I do think the cookies thing is sort of fun because it's his signature. 
I mean, I do think the world building that happens yeah. is very LGBTQ+. Plus. Yes. I like that there's, the more that we are talking about it, the more I'm like, oh my God, I forgot. There's that part and there's that part. I'm sort of like, when did we come up with all of this mm-hmm. stuff? It's, um, what's the, it's almost like, um, like a one word story is how we've like sort of invented the Santa myth is like, uh-huh. everyone's just adding like a little bit here and there yeah, and, that, yeah, yeah, and it's yeah, yeah. all true. Yeah. It's like an open source myth. Wow. It's very, the third graders writing the morning show. Which I, <laughs> I'm midway through this latest season. I have to. I really have to stick. The with writers it. of the morning show also wrote Santa. Oh, that that's true. Is actually, really true. It was originally <laughs> supposed to go to Juliana Margulies. Yeah, but she then they made him. They made him a man because a woman Santa didn't test well. Well, the fact the fact is that Alicia Florick, played by Juliana Margulies in The Good Wife, actually is Mrs. Claus. This that 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 story takes place before that, she's met Santa. Wait, that is <laughs> and genius. That's the tragedy yeah. is that Mrs. Yeah. Claus actually was a lawyer named Alicia Florick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I am gonna start incorporating this into my please, show. Please, please. <laughs> um, um, and then. Now she's like, I guess what? What do we call her? Like a figurehead, a homemaker, a first lady type? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Here's a question. Do they have kids? No. And if not... If they don't, they're not having them now. Well, (laughs) certainly not. Well, not naturally, George, that they could adopt. There's IVF in the North Pole. That's true. I guess. That's not carte blanche, though. You can't just... Get IVF, like if you're a woman of a certain. Age. I think if you're Mrs. Claus, you can. Yeah, yeah she has access. Right, she's right, Alicia right, Florick. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> she could talk her way into it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Huh. I do. I wonder how, as new Christmas myths come out. Yeah. I'm like, I do find myself being like, no, like that's not no, like Elf on a Shelf. Like no, oh. no, I'm, I'm, I'm like I, I don't, uh, I don't like that. No. no. Although you know what, like, look, it makes people have fun. It, like, Does it? it? The elf is sometimes over here, sometimes over there. It's like so. I guess whimsical. I like that. That's what I'm saying. It's like I don't want to yuck anyone's yum. I would hate if someone did that to me. But I think that's what Elf on a Shelf is all about: is yucking yum. He's being like, I'm watching you. It's a, literally a police. State. Yeah. Well, but that okay. Wait, how have we not talked about Naughty and Nice? Oh. Talk about police state and talk about surveil- mass surveillance and the Patriot Act. Because to, it, in some ways, Santa is actually an instrument of the state. And so if you <laughs> add that to the fact that he also, as we said, is corporate owned by the Coca-Cola Corporation, I mean, it's sort of giving Oppenheimer. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think you're 100% right. I do think the one thing that maybe is not police state about it is that he's, I do think it's an empty threat. He's always like, are you always, naughty or are you nice? Yeah. And it's like, you're always nice, even if you're bad as hell. Did yeah. you ever know a kid that was naughty and got nothing or got coal? No. I. That's what I'm saying. It's, it's like it, it's such pathetic. It's an empty threat. It's fear yeah. mongering. Yeah. Yeah, but okay. <laughs> and that's what fucks up kids. That's what fucks up kids. That, not not the whole thing of like, is Santa real? Yeah, mm-hmm, he, of course mm-hmm. he is. It's kids like, need to learn what accountability. Fucks up kids is this like threat mm. yeah. of poverty. So and to <laughs> jump off of that. Let's zoom out a little bit and think about this structurally. Re- realistically, you. realistically, kids who get better gifts have wealthier parents. Kids who do not get gifts have parents who cannot afford to buy them gifts. You went there. So we are talking about a world in which if you are poor, you are naughty. Yeah. And if you are rich, you are nice. <laughs> Fuck. That this is why I wanted to bring this up. Is so true. Damn. And it puts the blame on the children. You know who would make an incredibly amazing satire about this and sort of the implications of class? Emerald, Emerald Fennell. Fennell. She <laughs> should make the Santa movie. She should get a co-writer. But Greta. Yeah. Greta, Gerwig. Greta Gerwig. What do you think? I actually think they would do stunning work together. And they did in Barbie. I liked her performance as Oh, Midge. that's right. She was, she was great as Midge. Oh, she was Midge? Well, she I actually think Emerald Fennell is great, great actor on, on screen. I thought she was great as Camilla. Crown. Yeah. I mean, like. Um, no, she's a great actor. And I will say, like, I, I, I will likely see everything she ever does. Great, great actor. And by the way, great director of actors. Oh, yeah. I think she, I think she, you know, that's like, that's. I'm not anti Emerald no. Fennell. I just, I, I actually am pro Pulp. I just think we should understand her as pulp. Hmm. Yes. I think you guys are being so nuanced, and I think people will really celebrate that. Yeah. She, you know what I love about her? She makes fucking choices. Choices. Mm-hmm. And it's like this fear of choices we have in culture right now where things are only cool if people are, like, dispossessed or, like, you know, whatever. It's like that thing of, like, I'm not going to try because that's uncool. Yeah. Like, she makes big fucking choices. You know what I was thinking that about? I started the new Nathan Fielder and Emma Stone show. Oh, how is it? Loving yeah. it. 
and I'm like, it has been so long since I have felt excited. I'm like, I don't know what's going to happen in the next scene. Like, anything could happen. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, yeah, literally don't remember the last time I felt that way about. I mean, of course, other than Oppenheimer. I also <laughs> heard um, that Poor Things is fucking fantastic. Oh, I, I heard that, oh, I heard I heard that, that she's too. unbelievable in it. You know, she's she, one of our best. She, she is, is, actually. She is. she is, actually. And she would be great on this show, too. Well, because yeah. she's I a, really uh, wanted her to come on last couple Well, yeah. she will do both. She will do both. At one day. You think so? Yeah. Mm. She'll do it before she'll, Kate she'll definitely, <laughs> she'll definitely do yours. <laughs> I think she would do to this. I know we would have to this. get to her in some unofficial way. She's not going to do this by, just by us emailing her uh, reps. We have mutual friends with her. Well, yes, because she's in the extended uh, comedy universe. She certainly is. Well, it's, yeah, it's extending she's quite a bit. She's in the ECU. She's yeah. actually an incredible <laughs> success story of like someone who was in broad comedies and then became an Academy Award oh, winning yeah. actor. Yeah. So, speaking I guess ECU Julia Roberts is sort of like that. Yeah. Do you know that some people refer to this as the LCU? Las Colas Ristas universe? universe? Because we were the first. I think I am okay with that. I'm okay you, with that. You hate that. No, no. I, I think that makes complete sense. I actually completely love that, and I embrace it. Yeah. What am I going to do, change the narrative right now? No. SLU? Yeah. No, no, no. No. Radio Lab universe. No, 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 no. No, also, the fact that it's Lost Culture Teresa's universe lets us be sort of the alt- Girls, like well, we, it's, it's you know you guys are the alt girls. Yeah, yeah. You think we're talking about this on Lost Culture? And no, we get we're to not. be we're talking like, about Taylor's oh. amazing. That is this not week true. she released another song. Oh well, I thank God we're talking. It about- was so good, and we streamed it. <laughs> That's Lost Culture Reese's. <laughs> Damn, beat us but to it. Different when are you guys voice. gonna? When are you guys gonna bring back? I don't think so, honey. Live at the Bell House, because I'm ready to make my comeback. Okay, do you don't have to Mr. answer? Mr. <laughs> I saw Sunset Boulevard with Nicole Scherzinger. You did? Yes. In London? Can was I she good? Something? It was one of the best performances I've ever seen in a staging of this musical that should be seen and I think will because I think it's going to transfer. You guys have to go. Oh, I'm it all is, in. It is unbelievable. It wow. was really exciting. Yeah. I I fully believe in her. I, I respected her since Buttons. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny you say that because this actually... All right. Wow, I just had an incredible memory. This conviction is really I amazing. Have respe- I've been like, there, this is a figure of great respect, and I bet she can act. I actually have a distinct memory of watching, this was when I still live in New Jersey, watching a Christmas special of some, like, uh, sorry, a New Year's special of some sort, probably Dick Clark or something, and the Pussycat Dolls came out and did Buttons. Yep. And I was like, how bold yeah. at the New Year's special to, to do, do buttons. buttons. And that's when I knew she was a star. Yeah, she's always pushing the envelope. And then the she's other thing. She's literally always been a star. Yeah. And I'm telling you, what her singing was, of course, fantastic. Her acting. Yeah. But say the other thing. Well, I just think, so for me, a big Nicole, and I don't know if this is going to translate well, well, we'll put in a clip. A big Nicole Scherzinger moment for me is that clip where she's talking about how she wrote and performed all the songs on the Pussycat yeah, Dolls yeah. album. And then they heard the album for the first, the other dolls heard the music for the first time when they listened to the album yeah. that they were allegedly on. Yeah. And so she's giving an interview and she's like, I'm going to get in trouble for saying this, but, but I the reason they heard it in studio is because I was the one singing. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> I was the one singing. <laughs> the dolls had been together for nearly five years, but now Nicole Scherzinger is sharing another well-kept secret. She says that on the Dolls studio albums, almost all of the tracks, including the background vocals, were all her own. I love those girls, my sisters, but people don't even know the story. They have no idea. I was in center because I was singing. I was the one singing. Oh, man. Oh, man. I hope I don't get in trouble for the stuff that I say. Because I never really talked about it, but I'll never forget I finished the album, PCD. And Ron and I brought the girls into the studio and we played it for them. And it was the first time they'd ever heard the music. Do you understand what I'm saying? We played the album for the Pussycat Dolls. It's the first time they'd ever heard the songs. Melody sang a, a, a bit here and there, but the records were Nicole, you know, with, 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 with the exception of an, an occasional ad lib. But they were Nicole. They were created with, with her. 
you know what? If that's true, then good for her. Good yeah. for her. Take the credit that you are owed. Yeah. yeah. Because yeah. Pussycat Dolls were a global sensation. They were. They were. They were. And she, was, she, she fucking ate down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And another thing is you have to watch her interviews um, about Santa Clara. I actually Bar. have. <laughs> so she's like sort of like in character as she's doing it. She goes, I feel like I am Norma Desmond. <laughs> and the music filled my soul. And she's like so like goofy loofy. And then like, I don't know if she still does it, but in the days where the, the musical was opening, yeah, she came to the stage door in character Really? Yes, and she like, greeted the audience that had just seen her in character, and it was like sort of Gaga-ish, which makes me feel like she'd be great on this podcast. Oh, I, I, <laughs> I, I agree. I mean, I also, so the interviews I've seen are very much her being like, first of all, to see any American celebrity on British talk shows is mm-hmm. the greatest joy. I mean, to watch clips of Grand Norton, I am oh, yeah. it, oh, heaven. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's like her on morning shows, and she just goes, <laughs> let me tell you something, y'all. Theater is no joke. Yeah. And then everyone like goes wild. They're like, you, you said it. Oh my gosh. So say more about that. She yeah. Eight shows a week. They go, yeah. oh my God. Yeah. Say more about that. Yeah. It is exhausting. Ugh. Well, thank you so yeah. much for coming. Ugh. But I do, I mean, how? what a great sort of career chapter for her to be covered in blood doing uh Also the Broadway. reason that she's covered in blood, yeah. like the twist at the end of Sunset Boulevard, I won't say because again, I, I encourage everyone to see it when they can, if they can is so fucking crazy and works so well. And this director, Jamie Lloyd, who also did A Doll's House with Jessica Chastain. Oh, uh, I didn't realize. He, everything he does is like this like really classic or, you know, purporting to be like iconic, you know, stuff and but done very minimalist mm-hmm. with like really weird choices and like very apt choices. And he's just really good. And then you see him and he's like covered in tattoos and like- Oh my know. God, yes, I remember, uh, yes, I, I remember seeing him when he and Jessica Chastain were like doing press together. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. Yes. So now he's out like doing press for Sunset Boulevard, and you're like, oh, this is him. And you're like, I don't know. It's just very cool. Yeah. And, and it's like reinventing things for not necessarily a younger audience, but just like a, an audience that is going to be, you know, revitalized mm. by something like yeah. this. It's 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 worthy of worthy of eyes. Oh. All right. Should we do our final segment? We have to, but I don't want, I'm having so much fun. I know, and I'm looking up at the clock and it's 11.30. No, I know we have to, we have and, to. And so it's just like, unfortunately, like it's one of those things where like, <laughs> the decision is being made for us mm. by time. It's yeah. so messed up. I hate that we are all products of our time. But what I would love is if you guys came back on the LC. Oh, that would be such a true. Oh my God, I would. I think that would. I would Maybe we that. can convince Bo and Yang, <laughs> heard of him, <laughs> to get here in this very room at some point like, Within the next couple of weeks, that would be I mean, incredible. I feel like the girls want that holiday app. Holiday app. Yeah. Also, Nicole Scherzinger would be a great Mrs. Claus. Oh, certainly, of course. You know, so I will plug the album very quick. Please, I have a song which yes. I mentioned earlier called "Every Christmas Eve," which is Mrs. Claus's theme, and I think she would do a stunning performance of it. And what I want to have happen eventually with the album is Hamiltonize it, Hamilton <laughs> mixtape, where all my songs are covered by other people, and I would say to her mm. that I think she would I've said it before I'll say it again eat down on this mm-hmm. and I just want to say I know we haven't had a lot of time to promote the album to me your Christmas show is like as we said before it's difficult to get on board with new lore to the, to yes. the Christmas lore yes. and I would say in my entire adult life your show has been the one thing that I have accepted into my life as Thank like you. new canon and the 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 Ha- the joy that show brings me every year, it's actually, I have two traditions media-wise. One is going to your show and the other is watching Eyes Wide Shot. <laughs> really? Yes. Oh, I love that. <laughs> You're exactly who, Yeah. that, that, that cross-section is major. Yeah, and, and um, there is a photo of like a group of us after your show in probably like 2018 and we're all sort of wearing like Christmas coated sweaters mm-hmm. and it truly is like, a warm bath to me. Aww. Like it is. Are you gonna get to come this year? It's well, really late in the month. I, it's uh, December 23rd at Town Hall. I'll be I here, I think. Out of town. Like Dang. many people. If you're here, come. I mean, like, obviously, just tell yeah. me. Yeah. Give you a ticket. Um, but everyone else that's listening to this has to buy tickets. <laughs> you know, everything is at Town Hall now. I'm, I'm seeing Kiki and Herb there. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's a lot of fun. Yeah. Town Hall's great. I would say this, this year I'm playing, like, bigger venues, and it makes me nervous because, like, you know, you don't just, like, it's not like, you know, when you used to have a show at like Union Hall, yeah, and it's yeah, like, yeah. I will I sell the tickets? And like, of course you will. Mm-hmm. It's like, now it's like, I get nervous. So 
www.mattrogersofficial.com to buy tickets. Please come see and it. It's, it's a lot of fun. And we're doing it with a full band. Ooh, and I didn't I'm, know that. I feel Whoa. like this is, yeah. So Henry and a bassist and a drummer. Uh, fun. Yeah. And it'll be fun. It is so sad that we have no musical talents. That's not true. I don't think I'm that's a drummer. true. I, can I say something about singing? It's not about being able to sing. It's actually about how much you want to sing. Well, you have, but you have an incredible voice. I so also, that's yeah, actually you've unfair. also you've said this before, and actually, <laughs> that's like being like being skinny is just about loving life and Literally. walking to yeah. your appointments. <laughs> Yeah, well, no, that's actually I, I've heard you say that before, and that is a very celebrity thing to say. Like, like, fo, fo, like the sort of George. faux humility. Like, <laughs> any if, anyone can do what I do. Anyone can do it it's if like, they just believe. No, I guess I get that. I'm just saying, like, uh, oh my god, I just looked down and well, there was a picture of us. <laughs> that's so weird. scary. I looked down. You ever look around and like all of a sudden there's a picture of you like in your own home? Anyway, we should do the last segment. Okay, let's do the last segment. Okay. So, oh. Matt, the final segment is called Shoutouts. And yes, in yes, this yes. segment, we pay homage to the grand straight tradition of the radio shoutout. Mm-hmm. We give a shout out to anything that we enjoy as if you're shouting out to your squad back home. Mm-hmm. Um, George, I can do one. Do you have one? Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> What's up, foodies out there? I have a food related shout out today. And this is a big, big step for me. I am ready to give a shout out to the Italian way of having pasta first and then salad. Whoa. I have resisted this for my entire life. I have said I am a, a, a red-blooded American. Blue-blooded? I don't know. Oh. I am an American <laughs> red-blooded. You don't want to be blue-blooded. Okay, red, I white, am red, blue-blooded. white, and blue-blooded American. Blue and I blue. know... <laughs> Bleed blue. <laughs> and I know that salad goes first. Salad is an appetizer, and it is something that when you go to a nice restaurant, they bring first. And you know what happens after that? They bring the entrees, of which pasta is one. Mm. So so how are who are you to tell me? And by the way, that also happens in Italian restaurants in New York owned by Italian people, not just Italian American people like Joanne. And so I so I know I know how I'm supposed to eat my pasta. But here's what I have now learned. You go to someone's house, the pasta is hot and warm, the sauce is warm, you want to eat that first, and then you need a little something to cleanse the palate before dessert. That's when you get your arugula salad with yeah, some thinly sliced fennel in it. It has been years of me attempting to get used to it and being so anti. And finally last night I said, I'm going to let this happen. And I'm going to enjoy this crunchy salad after my delicious tomato sauce. And it worked. So wow. shout out to Italy and shout out to Stephanie Germanata. Woo! Amazing. That's huge. Yeah. I recently went to Joanne Trattori. Oh, I haven't been. How have never been? I really want to go. Been That's insane. I know. I'm bad. You must go. I want to go. Do they have merch? I went on Halloween. <laughs> they do have merch. I got to get some merch. Damn, you I'm going. Really, that's like, I feel sad. I know. I really, we I should go. Myself. We should go. We're going. Wait, maybe we should record our Las Culturistas episode from Joanne Trattoria. <laughs> Live from Joanne Trattoria, and then we get the best of all, all the worlds when Lady Gaga comes in. Like, comes I heard in. I'd be great on these podcasts. <laughs> and we absolutely have a meltdown. I'm okay, looking over at you because you can kind of make this happen. I mean, like, peak for the, the, for the holidays. I'm at Olivia, producer. <laughs> okay. Um, I have one. Okay. What's up, freaks, losers, and perverts? I want to give a huge shout out to the Andre 3000 Flute album. Oh. I heard about this album and I said, this is not for me. I'm sorry. This sounds like something I don't enjoy. Uh. Last night, I, I'm i not a big stoner, but I'll say it. I had a little bit of weed and I said, okay, let's, it's now or never, babe. Put the album on. And I put it on and I was in heaven. I was feeling like I was underwater, maybe in a rainforest. I was feeling sort of transported out of New York City, which honey, you can't do uh, for uh, uh, that cheap, I'll tell you what. And I thought, you know what? I'm so glad this man is taking swings. You know, so many people there say, okay, gotta get back to work, gotta do what people expect me to do. And he said, what if I take 15 years to do something that is literally only for me? And that is so impressive and so powerful, and it's fun. And it also made me be like, damn, when you have taste, you just have taste. And that is sometimes upsetting to learn about, but also sometimes really amazing. So shout out to the Andre 3000 Flute album. I love it. XOXO, Sam. Wow. People should get to show their talent. Sometimes when you have taste, you have taste. When you have taste, you have taste. And it it doesn't matter what medium. Yeah. It's upsetting. That actually kind of connects to my shout out. Ooh. (laughs) Okay. Ready? Yeah. Yeah. What's everybody? (laughs) 
Wow. I've never seen anything like that. <laughs> What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Matt Raddus, here on the radio. And by radio, I mean it's Radio Lab Podcast. I just want to give a quick shout out to Room Temperature Water. Oh. There's nothing like you. And something that people have a misconception about is that cold water is better. No, actually, honey, cold water can actually freeze up the vocal cords. So if you're a singer out there or trying to sing, it's not about how much you can sing. It's about how much you want to sing, no matter how much anyone says. Otherwise, you can just drink room temperature water. You hydrate quicker, baby, gets because it's closer to your actual temperature of your body. And it lubricates... Yeah, I said it. The ooh. vocal cords. Oh, oh my God. This is like room temperature water. It tastes good because actually your body has to love it. It's the only thing no one can argue with. Every human needs water. That means every human loves water. It's like when you feel the warmth on your skin, honey. It's good. The rain on your so lips. everyone drink up this Christmas, this holiday season. I want to see you drinking room temperature water. Put the beers down. Put the cocktails down. Just drink water, baby. This is a special shout out to all my sober people out there. I know you love love water too and i love you hey shout out Woo! Woo. Wow. i think that's so amazing i actually love room temperature water as well it's and when, so good when water is cold you, i get upset haven't you done a shout out to room temperature water before that's what makes and i've said it before that you're the bowen <laughs> and you're the matt yeah yeah i mean i it was in our episode of the parna and Charla. really either you or a parna did a shout out to room temperature water and then it became a whole conversation because right. i talked about how ice cream is too cold and then you need to make warm ice cream the, sam's Sam thinks they need to make warm ice cream. <laughs> well, well, room temperature. God, I'm literally trying to think. Warm. You want a, to you ice want cream. a creme brulee? Warm. No, ice I want cream. a panna cotta. I want room temperature ice cream. You want milk? No, I want it to be the texture of ice cream. And, you, and just not so damn cold. And once again, you this don't. This makes sense. You are milk. You are baby right now. I you want, are literally baby girl. I want cream. <laughs> Ice cream. Wait, wait, I think the three of us are baby girl. I know. Okay, what so is baby girl? When a guy calls you baby girl. Oh, you know baby, what baby girl. girl is. I know that it's the new thing now that everyone is baby girl and Jacob Elordi is baby girl, but it's, I haven't done I the don't research. I don't even know if he is baby girl. He's little baby girl when he wears Because he has a purse. Is. Ask Patrick Rogers what baby girl is. Ask House what baby girl is. He'll tell you. Well, I, but you're here now. Fine. <laughs> Uh, baby girl is like someone who like presents as a little bit masked. But, yeah. Like, low key. like Pedro Pascal is baby girl. Yeah. Totally. Like, but he's low key a little bit like. Y- oh yeah. yeah. You probably you probably could put your dick inside him. There's an undercurrent. Oh, I see. It's like baby girl is like you know like when a masked person has like a little bit of a femme voice, they're a little baby girl. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. And there you it's go. It's a hint. It's a. I'm way. trying to I'm trying to like think of a good uh, a celebrity baby girl. Um, let's see. Yeah. Well, I just cut. Ba- I mean, Pedro is baby. Pedro, girl. okay. I mean, I think, I think, like in a way, like Bad Bunny is baby. Girl. Yeah. yeah. I think that, um, in many ways, uh, who's okay. baby girl? Oh, oh, like Andrew Garfield is baby girl. <laughs> yeah, totally. totally, totally. Wow, great example. Like, because because you get the sense that he'd be like, he would like cozy up to you if you said something nice to him and give you a soft kiss on the cheek. Remember that's remember that interview that Andrew Garfield did with Colbert where they kissed. Yeah. That was like peak baby girl behavior. <laughs> okay. I'm baby. Does that make sense to you now? Absolutely. You know who else is baby girl? The celebrity we, I was talking about before we started recording. Oh, yeah. Oh. Baby girl. But That's unfortunately, he is baby girl. He is so baby girl. Yeah. Well, Matt, thank you so much for doing the podcast. Thank you so much for having me. How many times have I been on? Four? Uh, seven. Good. <laughs> Let's rational out. I've been on five. You know what we need to get you on? What? Is a live show because when we booked you last time, oh, you got yeah. sick. I really, and can I tell you something? It's one of those things where you guys will often, and a lot of people do this, but it affects me most when you do it. It's like when you <laughs> post pictures of the live show after the fact, and I look at who you have on stage, and I'm like, I should be there. And it's never that I'm looking at someone that shouldn't be. It's mm-hmm. just that I should be, I would be, it, it hurts me that I can't also be there participating. Of course. Because right. It just hurts me. And right. to be clear, we have. I we have, have been invited. Yes. <laughs> I have been invited. It's not that. Yeah. No. Yeah. You have, you have a mental block on being there. But it is a good reminder for us. You know, sometimes because we have invited you, we're like, oh, that has been crossed off the list. No. But it's a good no, reminder. No, no. It's a good reminder. No, we actually have to. Literally to always on. invite me, and <laughs> I live here now again. Mm. Oh, right. I do always forget that. I forget that. Yeah. Because I'm like always in LA. <laughs> yeah. But I hate it. I hate it. But that's a whole other podcast. Well, damn, you again and sound I, so celebrity. <laughs> I live in New York now, but I'm never here. <laughs> well, you know, you and are anyone can sing. You are almost, uh, you know, we were we haven't sent out invites yet, but we were making our list for our Christmas party, and you were almost not on it because I was going off of last year's list 
which you were not on because you do not live here. I, I, and well, I and also I tour during Christmas. Oh, right. That's really the reason That's... why I can't do it at Christmas. It's actually the great conundrum of being a Christmas staple. Of course. Is because that I can't participate in any Christmas things. Yeah. That is so sad. Soon I'll just be completely disconnected from the culture and I'll just be singing words I don't even recognize. I oh. mean, yeah, it's uh, people ask us, what are you doing for Pride? We say, we're posting. <laughs> we're working. <laughs> we can't even get into the spirit of Pride anymore. I forgot because... what Pride is. I forgot I was gay. Honey, you're the only one. <laughs> ah! <laughs> um, well, we end every episode. Go out the there. <laughs> <laughs> How do you guys end? We go, bye. Bye. <laughs>